welcome to our service this morning. My name's Tim and I'm a local preacher from the Cheshire South Methodist Circuit. I live and worship in Sandbatch, but this morning I welcome you on behalf of the Methodist people of Alsager to our service. We join together on YouTube from wherever we are in the world and we join together because we all have a love of God. We continue to study the Gospel of Mark and today's reading is from Mark chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. That will be read for us later in our service but I'd like us to start by considering why we are here this morning. So let's pray together. All praise and thanksgiving be to you, O God, in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son. You came among us to reveal your love and to care for all the world. And you returned to heaven, where you live forever to intercede for us. Help us to call upon your name. Help us to call upon your name this day and to render you the love and obedience of our hearts, our minds and our souls. With all who gather from wherever we're from, may we hallow your name and celebrate your good and gracious will. Open to us the way to you and help us as one to enter into your presence. Amen. I'm aware also that we may have entered this service from all different parts of the world today. We may be here for many, many different reasons. We may be looking to get many, many different things from this service. We may be looking to God. So as we consider that, Let's sing our first song together, which reminds us that there are indeed 10,000 reasons why we may well be here today. Let's sing together the Matt Redmond song. Whatever lies before me 
creation. We adore your handicraft. We worship you in your wholeness. Father, as a church, we've been studying Mark Gospel. Once again, we are reminded the true identity of our Lord Jesus. His power to teach, his power to heal, and his power to forgive. So in that grace, Lord Jesus, we come to you to say sorry. We say sorry for the time that we put our eyes away from you, looking into our personal desire, follow our own agenda. So Lord Jesus, may we all hear your word of forgiveness. Your sin are forgiven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Remake us and renew us so we can rise up and follow you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Today's reading comes from the beginning of Jesus' ministry from Mark chapter 2. Verses 1 to 12. Jesus heals a paralytic. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralysed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts. Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? 
At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions amongst themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. But so that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go home. And he stood up, and immediately took the mat, and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Amen. Thanks be to God from this reading from his word. Hello and welcome to the service to all our young people. Or if you are feeling young this morning, you are very welcome. Thank you so much, Helen, for doing the reading this morning. Thank you for giving up your time to do that. Um, and hopefully um, for the rest of you, you've received our kids activities that either you've got through our um, email through Rob or you've seen on our Facebook pages. Um, I hope you enjoy those. We've been working our way through Mark's Gospel and um, today is one of my favourite passages about the paralysed man. So we're going to have an activity to do with that right now. So for this craft activity what you will need is some lollipop sticks, some coloured card, some white card, split pin, colouring pens um, and either some glue or some sellotape and a pair of scissors. Done here, you can see the man is lying down, 
And then he's come back up and stood back up because Jesus said, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And I love this story. I love it because I love seeing the faith of the four friends of this man that they ran to the top of the building that Jesus was in. They ripped open the roof and they lowered him down on ropes in front of Jesus. And Jesus was able not only to heal the man, but to forgive the man's sins. And that's the great thing. Jesus still has so much power. The name of Jesus has so much power. He has the power to heal and he has the power to forgive our sins. So we can thank him for that and thank him that he still has power today. We're now going to sing again, Lord of the Dance. Let's pray. Lord, as we come before you this morning, clear our minds to your word, clear our hearts to your love, and clear our bodies to your will. Amen. The story is told of a young Presbyterian pastor who was visiting an elderly woman in hospital. She was quite ill, gasping for breath, nearing the end of her life apparently. Surrounded by tubes, bags and machines, the young pastor read scripture and offered spiritual comfort. He asked, would you like a prayer before I go? The lady whispered, yes. The pastor inquired, what would you like me to pray for today? Pray that I would be healed, she responded. The pastor gulped. He thought, this poor woman can't accept the inevitable. She isn't facing reality. Fortunately, he kept those thoughts to himself and began to pray for her healing, kind of. Lord, we pray for your presence to be with our ailing sister. And if it be your will... We pray that she be restored to health and service. But if it's not your will, we certainly hope she will adjust to her circumstances. 
Immediately after the pastor put the amen on his timid prayer, the woman opened her eyes and sat up. She threw her feet over the side of the bed and stood. I think I'm healed, she exclaimed. Before the pastor could react, she walked over to the door, pulled it open, strode down the hall, and the last thing the pastor heard before she disappeared around the corner were the words, Look at me! Look at me! I'm healed! The pastor pushed his mouth closed, got up and slowly walked down the stairs into the parking bay. He opened his car door, stopped, looked up at the heavens and said, Lord, please don't ever do that to me again. That's a story from America. But we Christians do have an awkward relationship with healing, don't we? We pray for healing, but we don't expect much to happen. Certainly nothing that dramatic. We say we believe in God and that God can heal, but we really struggle to believe it. I know that feeling. Our scripture lesson this morning contains a story about healing. I thought it's very appropriate for today. And we do seek God's will that we are healed, move forward from this dark time that we're facing at the moment. But the story from Mark 2 tells us what when Jesus returned to Capernaum after several days it was reported he was back home so many gathered around so many that there was no room for them even the door and the hallways were full then some people came bringing to them their friend a paralyzed man carried by four of them and when they couldn't get to Jesus because of the crowd they removed the roof above him dug a hole through it and lowered their friend down. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralysed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. But there were some scribes sitting there who questioned in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It's blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once we read that Jesus perceived this in the spirit, that they were discussing questions among themselves. So he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralysed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up, take up your mat and walk. But so you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralysed man, I say to you, take up your mat and go home. And he stood up, immediately took the mat and went before them all. They were all amazed glorified God and said we've never seen anything like this that's a favorite story of mine because of its vivid imagery just imagine that map being lowered down from the ceiling in the middle of the crowded room but the story has important things to say to us all today the events take place early in Jesus's ministry He's in Capernaum, which is a well-to-do town on the shores of Lake Galilee, on a major trading route. And we read later in his ministry that Jesus used this town as very much a home base. Word gets round that he's returned after a preaching mission and people crowd into his house. Clearly, by this time, he's immensely popular. That's probably why the scribes and the Pharisees were there, likely sent from Jerusalem to scout out this young, popular, itinerant preacher and what he was up to. A paralysed man is bought, but his friends can't get through the crowd to Jesus. Now, the roofs on the Palestinian houses of the time weren't like they are today, so they dug a hole in the roof and managed to lower their friend to Jesus. I'm sure that that roof would easily be repaired after this story. But let's make a couple of observations about the story. Firstly, Jesus is impressed with the faith of the man and his friends. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralysed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. 
faith is often an important component of healing stories in the Bible. The faith of the person being healed is often pointed out by Jesus himself or by the gospel writers. But that raises an important question. How much faith is necessary to receive God's blessing? Some contemporary preachers have said that if we only have enough faith, God must heal us. Therefore, if we pray for healing and nothing happens, then it's our own fault. In some way, our faith must be deficient. I find nothing in the Bible or in my own personal life experiences to support such teaching. The relation of faith to healing is something of a mystery. For example, sometimes when Jesus healed, there is no mention of the faith of the recipient. In other cases, the faith of the recipient is shaky. Remember the man in Mark chapter 9 who said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. He received the healing he was seeking in spite of his waving faith. St Paul, on the other hand, asked God for healing several times, but his affliction continued. Healing is a gift from God, sometimes given, sometimes physically not. Faith seems to be important in relation to healing, but the amount and quality of faith seem to vary. So in answer to the question about how much faith is necessary for healing, I would say that we all need enough faith to ask. Jesus taught about the power of faith, the size of a mustard seed. That is very, very small. My second observation this morning has to do with the fact that Jesus is concerned about both spiritual and physical healing. His response to the paralysed man seems pretty odd at first. Son, your sins are forgiven, he says. First of all, you have to wonder what kind of sins a paralysed man could be committing. But Jesus is clear elsewhere that the heart and mind are where sin is centred. So a paralysed man could certainly have a critical spirit, have lustful thoughts, engage in gossip be unkind, etc. Apparently, Jesus saw something in this man that convinced him that the man's deepest need was the forgiveness of his sins. So he gave him what he needed most. If you have ever been weighed down with guilt over something that you've done, you understand how freeing it would be delivered from that heavy load. Perhaps you are still carrying such a heavy burden this morning. Jesus is here and he is more than willing to help you relieve some of that burden. Jesus' decision to forgive the man's sins demonstrates that he's concerned with bringing healing and wholeness to the whole person. That is part of what the kingdom of God is all about. Wholeness in all aspects of life. Sometimes religious conservatives have been accused of ignoring physical needs of people and just wanting to save their souls. Sometimes religious liberals have been accused of focusing only on the physical needs of people and ignoring their spiritual needs. Mission agencies and church mission committees all have agreements and disagreements all have divisions over whether evangelism and church planting should be central or addressing issues like hunger and homelessness should be. Jesus will have none of these divisions. He heals both body and soul and followers of Jesus should pay attention to both. Of course, when Jesus declares that the man's sins were forgiven, he provokes a strong response from the scribes and the Pharisees. In one sense, they're right, you know. The authority to forgive a person's sins is God's prerogative alone. As the psalmist reminds us, we sin primarily against God who created us for better things. 
Therefore, it's only God who can ultimately forgive us. The religious le leaders labelled Jesus' words as blasphemy because they rightly discern that he's claiming to be equal with God. They never even considered any of this contemporary nonsense about Jesus being a good teacher. They correctly understand that either he was claiming to be God in the flesh or he was a blasphemous heretic, a good teacher who was making false claims. Anyway, Jesus responds to their charge in a unique way. He basically acknowledges that anyone can say your sins are forgiven and there's no way that we can prove that one way or the other. But while no one can see healing of a soul, everyone can certainly see healing of a body. So Jesus heals the man's body to demonstrate his power to heal the soul. The man immediately gets up, walks away and carries his mat. Everyone, including presumably the scribes and the Pharisees, are amazed. Jesus has authority to heal body and soul, and he does. Finally, Jesus wants to heal our bodies and souls. He's a man of compassion. Nowhere in the Gospels can I find a story of Jesus turning away anyone who came to him seeking healing or forgiveness. Jesus wants us all to heal. Now Jesus certainly didn't heal every sick person in Palestine and his healings, like all healings, are provisional. In other words, all the people who Jesus healed, even those who he raised from the dead, eventually died. All healing is provisional or temporary in nature. But Jesus desired to heal those who sought him out. The scriptures are also very clear that God desires spiritual healing for us all. Nowhere do we find anyone who is turned away from God who genuinely seeks forgiveness for their sins. So how about you? How about me? Are we in need of some kind of healing today? Physical, emotional, spiritual relationships? We invite you forward as a people, as a community. Come to Jesus, for his arms are open and he's seeking to help us, seeking to guide us, seeking to lead us through his ways, through the ways of love. Amen. It's a privilege to have the freedom to pray together. May we not take this freedom for granted. So this morning, I invite you all to join me to pray for this broken world with all the broken people. So let's join together in prayer. Dear God, our Father in heaven, again, we are so privileged to call you our Father. For on you we can depend. Seeing this chaotic situation in your creation, God, you must be saddened by all this happening. But we don't lose hope, for in your sovereignty we come have faith. So we pray to you. We like to pray for our world, all the different countries. There were war-torn places and also there's the struggles with the rulers, conflicts between rulers and civilians. Father, Your will is ready for a just, fair, 
sharing. But we can see and justice happen. So God, we pray that you can bless all those who deserve to be blessed. And Father, we also pray for the leaders, for all those decision makers. May they focus to bridge the gap between realities and challenges. May they consider the distance between the need for protection of our Mother Earth and an economic model that we generate growth not at any cost. God, give the wisdom to alter the routines and to sort out the priorities. Father, may all realize that the poor are not the object of our good intention, but the subject of change. Now we pray for all the broken people especially in this pandemic we viewed all of us the bigger gap between the rich and the poor the powerful and the powerless father give everybody the wisdom to put them into the priority bring justice into this earth. May we facing the goal of equal sharing. Father, we are very thankful for so many people in this desperate situation, they risk their own life to rescue for those people. They nearly lost their life. And we thank you for all these people with tremendous dedication, keep the society going, taking care of our health system, looking after every bit which we need in where we live. So we call them all frontline workers. So we ask your protection, Lord, and we ask you to give them the strength to go on. And we pray for the churches and our own church. Father, as we receive your calling as the people of your church, may we continue to work on the calling. Step out and be bold.
we come to the end of our service today, might I say, it's been an absolute delight to be able to share with you all. And let's bring all that we've learned today together as we share in a blessing. So in the power of the Holy Spirit, we now go forth into the world to fulfil our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. May we go in peace, serve and love the Lord our God, and may all of God's blessings, love, joy, peace, strength, truth, kindness, mercy, be upon you and all who you love and shine from you this day and forevermore. Amen.